Welcome. In this video I'm taking a look at the Ingenious Cloud uh, Wi-Fi access point and switch. And this was provided to me by Ingenious, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you're interested in this, I'll put a link down in the description of this. And if I have them available, I'll put some affiliate links. And if you use those links, they help me out a little bit. It doesn't cost you anything extra. So what we have here is a Wi-Fi access point. We have an eight port PoE switch. So with these two components, you could set these up on your network and provide um, like enterprise level Wi-Fi access without having like a controller and uh, or servers, things like that. So, look so here's our access point here. So here's the mount. It looks like these are like T-Track mounts. Those might be standoffs. We have anchors here. Here's a mounting plate. Looks like this is a compliance sheet here. And this is a cloud services instructions. So here we have power, network, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and mesh. On the back we have mounting slots here so you could uh, put some screws on your surface and slide this on. You could also use the standoffs to mount it to T-Track or something. We have a little thing here to capture the wire. You have PoE or 12 volt power and you can't use them at the same time. You only use one at a time. So if you're using PoE on your ethernet, then you do not use this power. If you're using regular ethernet, then you need to have a power supply. And then of course there's vents all around it. This is the eight port PoE switch. Installation guide here also. So taking a look at the switch, we have some lights on the side. We have power, fault, PoE max, LAN mode, PoE mode, we have a LED mode button and then a reset button. We have the eight PoE ports. We have vents on the side, vent in the back. We have a little grounding tab here. We have the DC in and then we have the on off switch. On the bottom you have a little tab so you can mount it on a, a board with some screws. And you can see, barely see little circles here where you can put the rubber feet to set it down on a surface. Here we have a power cord. These are some feet, screws and anchors, and the power supply. Here's the power supply. It's input 100 to 240 volts AC at 1.8 amps, 50 to 60 hertz. Output is 54 volts at 1.2 amps. So let's say you had a, uh, let's say a restaurant, and it's a good sized restaurant, and you have multiple areas there, and you wanna put up multiple access points. So what you would do is you would put this switch in the back, you would run your internet into it, and then you would connect up the other ports to your access points. And you could have these in different areas spread throughout your business. And then you could have, say like you had a meeting room, uh, or, you, know, uh, you know, a private room, you could have one in there, um, different things. You could set up guest networks, you could run your uh, point of sale systems off of it, things like that. But you're managing it through the cloud. So instead of having like a box on premise, you have that in the cloud. So it's backed up in the cloud, it's managed in the cloud. Um, it kind of simplifies setting this up for your business. So uh, I could see this being used by someone who doesn't, um, that kind of maybe does their own IT uh, and they don't want to hire a firm to come in and spend a bunch of money and set up a bunch of leased equipment or things like that. This you just buy outright and then you manage it in the cloud. So I'm going to plug all this in and then we'll take a look at setting up the interface. Okay, so I'm logged into my computer and according to the instructions, I'm supposed to go to cloud.ingenious.ai. So I'll open that up and I'm going to register an account. So in the upper right hand corner it says don't have an account, sign up, so I'll click that. So I can sign up with Google, Facebook, or ePartner. I'm just gonna sign up with my email address. I'll hit continue. I'll go back to sign in. I'll click sign in. So it says user is registered and waiting for confirmation, so I'll have to check my email. Okay, so I received this email, it says activate your account, so I'll click on this. Then I'll click continue to login. So now I can sign in. It says, welcome to Ingenious Cloud. We're so glad you're here. Let us know if you have any. I think that's supposed to say questions maybe. I hit clear. It says you can change different scopes from the menu icon. The path is what you double click on the tree. We can accept cookies here. Let's see what this notification is. Okay, here it is. Yeah, so there was a bigger message down here. So I'll close that. 
So if we look on the left side here, we have a number of different icons. We have this little screen that says Manage Dashboard, Access Points, Switches, Topology, and Clients. Next, we have Settings, Configure SSID, Radio Settings, Cloud Radius Users, Firmware Upgrade, Remote System Log, Alert Settings, VLAN Settings, Switch Settings, and General Settings. Next, we have Event Log. And then finally, we have, it says EMZ List. Oh, that's a, I think that's just a list of our devices. So next, I want to hover over the little icon on the bottom, and you'll see Organization Inventory. I'll click on this, I'll click on register device, and then I'll put the serial numbers in of my devices. Now that I have those entered, I'll hit register. I'll hit done. So I'll select this now, and I'll click assign to network. And I have my network here. I'll select that, I'll hit apply. And it says assign to network successfully. So now I'm going to go plug this equipment in. Okay, so I plug the access point and the switch into my network, and my network is a simple network. I have a router, and it's running DHCP, and I've done nothing but plug these devices in. So I haven't configured them, connected to them, anything. They have power. So, and I plug the switch in, and I plug the access point into the switch, so it's getting powered off of PoE. So now if I click on the Manage interface and click on Dashboard, you'll see here it says Switches 1 and Access Points 1. So since I added those serial numbers in, when my switch was plugged in and my access point was plugged in, it talked to the cloud and registered itself. So now I have the two devices here uh, connected and I have zero clients right now. And you can see we have what throughput, top access points, top clients, top SSDs. We have a bunch of uh, dashboard information here. If we click over here again, we can go to access points and we can see our access point here. It's running channels 11 and 44 of uh, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. So if we click on this access point, uh, we can see the throughput channel utilization. We have the radios enabled, disabled. Uh, we have mesh over here. On the next tab, we have map, and you can uh, place your access points on the map. We have floor plans. You can uh, create a building here. If we go to switches, we'll see we have the switch here. I'll click on it. It tells us that two ports are in use. The first port is connected to the main switch, and the second port is connected to the access point. Next, we'll click on the little gear. So we'll click on SSID, and we have the EZM Cloud set up here. So this is per my network. So if I click up here, we have org network. So if I click on this other one I made called factory, if I double click on that, there's no settings here because there's nothing to set. So I'll get back up here to network. I'll go here to SSID. I'll click on this. I'll change this to Rick makes. I'll have it enabled. We have 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz enabled. We have the security type as open, OWE, WPA2 personal, WPA3 personal, a WPA3, WPA2 mixed, WPA2 enterprise, and WPA enterprise. So I'll do WPA2 personal. And here I'll enter a password in. So here we have 802.11r, which is fast roaming. And here we have 802.11w, which is protected managed frame. Client IP mode is bridge mode. We have VLAN IDs, enable application analysis, and advanced settings. Let's click on that. We have uh, layer two isolation, band steering. So this is how you can say prefer five gigahertz, things like that. You can change the RSSI threshold um, and the client percentage. So let's look at these. So I'll hit apply here. It says apply settings successful. So this will automatically synchronize with my local equipment and set up the Rick makes SSID. So if we click over on the gear again, we'll go to radio settings. So here we can dig into things like the channel. So these are both set to auto. The channel HT mode, I'll change this to 80 for the five gigahertz. Transmit power, uh, minimum bit rate, the client limit, uh, discard 802.11 ABG, disable 11 AX in 2.4 gigahertz. So this is Wi-Fi 6. Here's mesh. So the only thing I changed here is the 80, so I'll hit apply on that. We'll click back on our gear. You can see cloud radius users. So you could set users up here. We have firmware upgrade. So it says firmware release beta stable or previous stable. So you can configure that all from the cloud. Same with the switch. Beta stable previous stable. Remote system log. So here we have access point and switch and you can set these to log to a remote log using these. So you have access point and switch have the same setting, but you can uh, change them for each one. 
We have alert settings. So it says configuration changed within network. Access point goes offline for 10 minutes. Event with severity, warning, and above occurs. That's for the access point. So for switch, we have configuration change within network. Switch goes offline for 10 minutes. Switch port link status change. Switch spanning tree protocol port status change. Switch switch loopback detection status change. And event with severity warning and above occurs. We have VLAN settings. So here you can add a VLAN. We have switch settings. So we have spanning tree protocol turned on. The protocol is rapid spanning tree protocol. There's also a multiple spanning tree protocol. Bridge priority is 32768. Link layer discovery protocol is on. A voice VLAN is off. We have quality of service, IGMP snooping, jumbo frames. And then we have general settings here. So we have country is USA, time zone is uh, Chicago, and local credential is username and password. So local credential allows you to set a username and password here that it will set on the other devices. So if you want to go into just an access points interface, you can log in using the username and password you set here. So now I'm going to connect to the access point. So I'll put some details up on the screen for my connection. And you can see I'm using 802.11n, and that's because I'm using an older computer right now. If you're on a newer computer, you'd have the newer protocols available. So that's the basic of setting up the Ingenious Cloud uh, setup with the switch and the access point. So as you can see, you could set this up ahead of time um, at your location and then send it out. Say you have a chain of coffee shops. You could set these up at your main office. You could send them to the other locations. People would just plug them in. Um, you could have uh, an employee do it or you could hire an electrician if you're going to have it mounted on the ceiling or something. They could plug it in and once they plug it in, it will connect to the cloud and automatically be configured and ready to go. And then when you need to change settings, you can just do it in the cloud. And if you have like 10 coffee shops, you can manage all of those from one central location in the cloud. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. I'll put a link in the description to my Ingenious playlist below, and I'll probably be adding more videos on this Ingenious Cloud system. If you have any questions in the meantime, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.